from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 virtual. This is theCUBE virtual, I'm John Furrier, your host. This year we're not in person, uh, we're doing remote interviews because of the pandemic, the whole event's virtual, over three weeks. For this week, we're going to be having a lot of coverage in and out of what's going on with the news, all that stuff here happening on theCUBE. Our next guest is a featured segment, Ram Venkatesh, VP of Engineering at Cloudera. Welcome back to theCUBE. CUBE alumni, last time you were on was 2018 when we had physical events. Great to see you. Likewise, great to be here, thank you. Um, so, you know, Cloudera obviously modernized up with Hortonworks, that combination has been for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Always pioneering this abstraction layer, originally with Hadoop, now with data. All those right calls were made. Data is hot, it's a big part of reInvent. That's a big part of the theme. You know, machine learning, AI, 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 edge, 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 data lakes on steroids, higher level services in the cloud. This is the focus of reInvent, the big conversations. Give us an update on Cloudera's data platform. What's up, what's new? Absolutely. You know you are really speaking a language with, with the with the whole uh, data lake architecture that you alluded to, right? So Cloudera's mission has always been about, you know, we want to manage half the world's data, right? What this means for our customers is being able to aggregate data from lots of different sources into central places that we call data lakes, and then apply lots of different types of processing to it to derive business value. Right? With CDP, with Cloudera Data Platform, what we have essentially done is take those same three core tenets around data lakes, multifunction analytics, and uh, data stewardship and management to add on a bunch of cloud native capabilities to it. Right? So this was fundamentally, I'm talking about things like disaggregated storage and compute, right? being able to now not only take advantage of HDFS, but also at a pretty deep fundamental level, cloud storage. So this is the form factor that's really, really good for our customers to or to operate at from a TCO perspective, if you're going to manage hundreds of terabytes of data, right? Like, like a lot of our larger customers do. The second key piece that we've done with CDP has to do with us embracing containers and Kubernetes in a big way. Right? On-prem, our heritage is around virtual machines and clusters and things of that nature. But in the cloud context, especially in the context of managed Kubernetes services like Amazon's EKS, this lets us spin up our traditional workloads, SQL, Spark, machine learning, and so on, in the context of these Kubernetes, containerized environments, which lets the customers spin these up in, in seconds as opposed to you know, tens of minutes. And as their processing needs grow and shrink, they can actually scale much, much faster up and down to, you know, to make sure that they have the right cost-effective footprint for their compute. And no, the third piece, go ahead, please. No, no, go ahead, third piece. But the, the third key piece of all of this, right, is to say along with like cloud native orchestration and cloud native storage, is that we've embraced this notion of making sure that you, you actually have a robust data discovery story around it, right? So increasingly the data sets that you create on top of a platform like CDP, they themselves have value in other use cases, right? So we want to make sure that these data sets are properly replicated, they're probably secure, they're probably governed. So you can go and analyze where a data set came from. Capabilities of security and provenance are increasingly more important to our customers. So with CDP, we have a really good story around that data stewardship aspect, which is increasingly important as you as you get into the cloud and you have these sophisticated sharing scenarios for data. You know, Cloudera has always had, and Hortonworks, both companies, had strong technical chops, it's well documented. Certainly the Cube's been to all the events and covered both companies since the inception of uh, 10 years ago, of big data. But now we're in cloud, big data, fast data, little data, all data. This is what the cloud brings. So I want to get your thoughts on the number one focus of, of problem solving around cloud. I got to migrate or do I move to the cloud immediately and be born there? Now we know the hyperscale is born in the cloud. Companies like the Dropbox in the world, they were born in the cloud and all the benefits and goodness came with that. Yeah. But I'm going to be pivoting, if I'm a company out of COVID with a growth yeah. strategy, lift and shift. Okay, that was, it's over now. That's a low hanging fruit. That's the use cases kind of done, been there, done that. Is mm -hmm. it migration or born in the cloud? Take us through your thoughts on what does a company do right now? I think it's a really good question. If you think of you know where our customers are in their own data journey, right? So increasingly, 
you know, a few years ago, I would say it was about operating infrastructure. That's where their head was at, right? Increasingly, I think for them, it's about deriving value from the data assets that they already have. And this typically means, you know, combining data from different sources, be it structured data, semi-structured data, transactional data, non-transactional data, event-oriented data, messaging data. They want to bring all of that and analyze that uh, to make sure that they can actually identify ways to monetize it in ways that they had not thought about when they actually stored the data originally, right? So I think it's this drive towards increasing monetization of data assets that's driving the new use cases on the platform. Uh, traditionally, it used to be about, you know, SQL analysts who are, or if you were like a, like a, data, a data scientist using Apache Spark. So you, it was sort of this one function that you would focus on with the data. But increasingly we are seeing these are about, you know, these are collaborative use cases where you want to have a little bit of SQL, a little bit of machine learning, a little bit of, you know, potentially real time streaming or even things like Apache Flink that you're going to use to actually analyze the data. Yeah. And so when you, in this kind of an environment, Right, we see that the data that's being generated on-prem is extremely relevant to the use case. But the speed at which they want to deploy the use case, they really want to make sure that they can take advantage of the cloud's agility and infinite capacity to go do that. So it's it's really, yeah. the answer is it's complicated. Yeah. Right? It's not so much about, you know, I'm going to move my data platform that I used to run the old way from here to there, but it's about, I got this use case and I got to stand this up in six weeks, right, in the middle of, the pandemic and how do I go do that? And the data for that has to come from my existing line of business systems. I'm not going to move those over, but I want to make sure that I can analyze the data from there in some cohesive way. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. And I think just to kind of bring that back for the folks watching. And I remember when um, CDP was launched and the, these data platforms, it really was to replace the data warehouses, the old antiquated way of doing things. But it was interesting. It wasn't just about competing at that old cart category. It was a new category. So yeah, you had to have some tooling, some SQL, you know, to wrangle data and have some prefabricated, you know, data fenced out somewhere in some warehouse. But the value was the new use cases of data where you never know, you don't know where it's going to come until it comes, right? Because if you make it addressable, that was the, the idea of the data platform and data lakes and then having higher level services. So, you know, so to me, that's, I think one distinction, kind of new category, coexisting and disrupting an old category data warehousing. I always bought into that. You know, and there's some technical things, Spark, Hadoop, all these all the elements on mechanisms underneath. That's just evolution. But income, in, income's cloud. And I want to get your thoughts on this because one of the things that's coming out of all my interviews is speed, speed, speed. Deploying mm -hmm. high, uh, high, large scale at very large speeds. This is the modern application thinking. Okay, to make that work, you got to have the data fabric underneath. This has always been the kind of the dream scenario. So it's kind of playing out. So one, do you believe in that? And two, what is the relationship between Cloudera and AWS? Because I think that kind of interestingly points to this one piece. Absolutely. So I think that, yeah, from my perspective, right, this is what we call the shared data experience that's central to CDP. Like the idea is that, you know, data that is generated by the business in one use case is relevant and valid in another use case. That is central to how we see companies leveraging data or the, the second order monetization that they are after, right? So I think this is where getting out of a, of a traditional data warehouse like data silo context and being able to analyze all of the data that you have, I think is really, really important for many of our customers. Right? For example, many of them increasingly hold what they call these like data hackathons, right? Where they are looking at, can we answer this new question from all the data that we have? That is, that is a type of use case that's really, really hard to enable unless you have a very cohesive, very homogeneous view of all of your data. When it comes to the cloud partners, right? Increasingly, we see that the cloud native services, especially for the core storage, compute and security services are extremely robust, right? They give us, you know, the scale and that's really, truly unparalleled in terms of how much data we can address how quickly we can actually get access to compute on demand when we need it. And we can do all of this with like a very, very mature security and governance fabric that you can fit into, right? So we see that, you know, technologies like S3, for example, have come a long way. And along the journey with, with, with Amazon on this over the last seven, eight years, right, we have both learned how to operate our workflows. When you're running at petabyte scale, right, you really have to pay attention to matters like 
scale out and consistency and parallelism and all of these things, these matter significantly, right? And it's taken, there's a certain maturity curve that you have to go through to get there. The last part of that is that because the TCO is so optimized with, for the customer to operate this without any ops on their side, right? they can just start consuming data, even if it's a petabyte of data. Right? So this means that now we have to have the smarts in the processing engines to think about things like caching, for example, very, very differently. Because the way you cache data that's, that's in HDFS is very different from how you would do that in the context of S3. Or similarly, the way you think about consistency and metadata is very, very different at that layer. But we've made sure that we can abstract these differences out at the platform layer so that as an, as a, as an application consumer, you really get the same experience, whether you're running these analytics on-prem or whether you're running them in the cloud. And that's really central to how I see this space evolving, is that we want to meet the customer where they are rather than you know, forcing them to change the way they work because of the, the platform that they are sitting on top of. So could you take a minute to explain some of the integrations with AWS and some customer examples? Because, um, you know, first of all, cost is a big concern on everyone's mind because you know <laughs> it's still lower cost and higher value with the cloud anyway, but it could get away from you. So, you know, you're constantly, you know, petabytes at scale, there's a lot of data moving around. That's one thing. Absolutely, Two, right. integration with higher level services. Can you give, where does, explain how Cloudera integrates with Amazon. What's the relationship? The customer wants to know, hey, you guys, you know, partnering, explain the partnership and what does it mean for me? Absolutely. So the, the way we look at the partnership, and I hit that one first and then we can get to the rest of this, right? It's, it's really a four layer cake because the lowest layer is the core infrastructure services. We talked about storage and compute and, and security and IAM and so on and so forth, right? So that layer is a very robust integration that goes back a few years. The next layer up from that has to do with increasingly, you know, as our customers use analytic experiences from Cloudera and they want to combine that with data that's actually in the AWS compute experiences like say a Redshift, for example. Right, so the analytics layer, the Cloudera data warehouse offering and how that interops with the other services in Amazon that could be relevant. This is common file formats, that right? open source file formats really help us in this context to make sure that we have a very strong level of interop at the analytics layer. The third layer up from that has to do with consumption. Right? So if you're going to bring an analyst on board, you want to make sure that all of their SQL-like analyst experiences, notebooks, things of that nature, that's really strong in Cloud Data, the third layer. And the highest layer is really around data sharing. Right? So as AWS, Blue, and technologies like that become more prevalent, now customers want to make sure that they can have these data estates that they have on the different clouds actually interoperate. So we provide ways for them to browse and search data regardless of whether that data is on AWS or on prem. Right, so that's sort of the fourth layer in the stack. The vertical slice running through all of these is that we have a really strong business relationship with them, both on the on the on the commercial go-to-market side as well as in AWS marketplace. Right, so we can actually by having CDP be a part of AWS marketplace. This means that if you have an enterprise agreement with with Amazon, you can actually pay for CDP through the credits that you've already purchased, and that's, this is a very very tight relationship that's designed again for these large scale speeds and feeds kind of customer. So just to get this right, so if I love the four layer cake, icing's the success of CDP, love that birthday candles can be on top too when you're successful. But you're saying that you can, you're going to market with Amazon two ways, a marketplace listing, and then also jointly with their enterprise field programs. Is that right? Exactly. You say, because they have this program where you can bundle into the blanket POs or PO process, is that right? Can you explain that again? Correct. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you think of it, right, these, these data estates that we're talking about are significant. So we want to make sure that, you know, we are really aligned with them in terms of our cloud migration strategy, in terms of how the customer actually executes to what is a fairly, you know, it's a complex deployment to deploy a large multi-function data and estate takes time, right? So we want to make sure that we navigate this together jointly with AWS to make sure that from a best practices standpoint, for example, we are very well aligned from a cost standpoint, you know, what we are telling the customer architecturally is, is very well aligned. That's that's where I think really the, the heart of the engineering relationship between the two companies is at. So if you want Cloudera on Amazon, you just go in, you can click to buy, or if you got a deal with Amazon in terms of global marketplace deal, which they've been rolling out, 
I can buy there too, right? Exactly. All right. Well, Rump, thanks for the update and insight. Um, love the four layer cake. Love to get to see the modernization of the data platform from Cloudera and congratulations on all the hard work you guys have been doing with AWS. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, good to see you. Okay, I'm John Furrier, you're here on theCUBE for CUBE Virtual for AWS reInvent 2020 Virtual. Thanks for watching.